Jameson McFarland here, that brother. Now I'm going to tell you guys more and more in detail about the people that frequented 125th Street all the time. Some period of any given day, somebody was going to show up doing something. There was always a hustle. Harlem wasn't anything but a hustle. People were hustling. You name it, they hustled it in Harlem in those days. Now, this is the 60s. A lot of things are happening. And a lot of things that we've taken for granted that didn't happen, or you didn't know about, this, that, and the other. You know, I'm still young. I'm still naive about a lot of things, even though I grew up in Harlem. Like I say, now I'm starting to see the inner works on how the other side worked things. That's not the good anymore. I'm going to bring some good back in there, but I want to show you about the different types of hustles, hustles that they had back then. I'm in a tailor shop one day, and a guy pulls up a big truck out front, Olympic TV. Now, before he could get settled, double parked in front of our tailor shop, people started coming over. I'm wondering, well, what's, what's going on here? It was an Olympic TV uh, big box truck. This guy's name is Calvin. They called him TV Calvin. I didn't understand why they called him TV Calvin at first until Calvin was hustling Olympic TVs. Now, Olympic TVs back in those days was uh, like the fourth big brand TV. You had Zenith, you had uh, RCA, you had Magnavox, and then you had Zenith. You know, Zenith was like the fourth leading TV back then. So, he starts unloading TVs, he brings them into the tailor shop. Looking at myself and said, what's going on here? I don't know this deal. This is another one of them hustles that came through Ori's. Everybody who hustled something came through Ori's. All right. So, he's selling TVs. Now, you got to remember, in those days, everybody didn't, even though this was the 60s, everybody didn't have a TV. Now, believe it or not, we got our first TV when I was a kid. This was in the late 40s, early 50s. But now we're into the 60s, we're into the middle 60s, and there was still a lot of people that did not have TVs. How do I know? Because I didn't have one. I didn't have a TV. My family had one, but when I got on, out on my own, I didn't have a TV. Bob and Gene and I didn't have a TV. Like I said, we used to listen to the radio. So here's a TV. Now, remember, I'm still young, I'm still watching and guarding. Even though I'm making some money now, I'm still guarded of the monies that I had. But this guy's selling TVs. Now, what is he selling these TVs for? $35. Brand new, in the box and everything. So, he has about 20 TVs he sells and sells them just like that. I wonder, well, how do these people know? Where did, where did he come from? But the minute he parked, people started coming in looking for TVs. I don't buy one because I don't have the $30 to kick out for the TVs. Well, you know, time passes. And a couple of months later, here he comes again. And he got another 20, 25 TVs. And he doesn't call anybody. They just, people just start showing up. What I found out later was... When they saw his truck cross 125th Street, people from the stores that worked in these stores, that worked in the bank, that worked in some of the restaurants, automatically knew what the deal was. This went on. Half a year later, about every couple of months, this guy shows up with the TV. They call him TV Calvin. So finally one day, I asked Ori, I said, how does he get these TVs? This is his hustle. Like I say, if you saw him in the street, he just looks like a regular guy. He was just a truck driver. But everybody had a hustle. This is how he had his hustle. He was a truck driver, the delivery man for Olympic TV. He had two partners. One worked in assemble, and the other worked in shipping. So if a manifest came in to make up 
150 TVs for Macy's. Let's say, I'll just use Macy's for argument's sake. Macy's orders 150, because remember, like I said, they only had four stores. So 150 TVs is not a lot of TVs for four stores. You know, that's roughly 25 of these TVs, because they got everybody else's brand in there too. So his job is to deliver the TVs to Macy's. Well, Manifest comes in and they say they need 150 TVs. Well, his man in Assemble doesn't just assemble 150 TVs. He assembles 175 TVs. That's 25 more than the Manifest that came in for just Macy's. Okay. Once they're assembled, they're just sitting in the warehouse. His partner, who was in shipping, loads his truck up with the 150 TVs that are going to Macy's. He's got TVs going other places that he's got to drop off, different stores, different outlets. But he also puts that 25 extra on my man's truck. So my man is making his deliveries going around and he stops by our tailor shop and drops off 25 TVs that he sells to the people on 125th Street. I said, that's a different way of hustling. Now, was it illegal what he did? Yes. But there was a whole lot of things that were illegal going on and not just Harlem. All over the world, these things happen. So I thought as I got older in life, if he's doing that there, then somebody else is doing it somewhere else. But this is what's happening. It could be going on today, I don't know. I ain't accusing nobody, I ain't pointing a finger at anybody. But here's a hustle that this gentleman had back in the 60s. This, ran, this went on for as long as I worked on 125th Street. I don't know the guy outside of calling him TV Calvin, because that's what everybody called him. TV Calvin. Now, who was buying these TVs? People that worked in the bank, other merchants that had stores on 125th Street. There really wasn't at that particular time outside of Bloomsteen's department store who sold TVs. There wasn't really an, a TV, a place that sold TVs. That was one of the few places that you didn't see a lot of on 125th Street. You had a few places that sold some cameras, a few places that sold some watches, but you didn't have really an appliance vendor on 125th Street except Bloomstein's department store. Now, they got Olympic TVs too. He made his delivery there, but there wasn't nobody standing there checking. They, whatever they ordered, he delivered them to them. It's just that his partner, who was in Assemble, who assembled the TVs where Olympic TV outlet was, okay, where their manufacturing plant was, those were the guys. They would just make up some extras, okay? Um, how many TVs that they were making back then? I haven't got a clue. How many, they, how many TVs the places make up now? I still don't have a clue. One of the fact of what places do is this was a hustle that these guys had even back then. Now I had never heard of anything as so uniquely complicated, it wasn't complicated, but a scheme that was done neat. See, the, the word schemers goes, dates back since the beginning of man. Man was always scheming on the other, how to get over. These brothers were just getting over on Olympic TV. Now, I don't know how much money is that they make us. Trust me when I tell you, there was three of them. It was 25 TVs at roughly 30 bucks a hit, okay? Yeah, that amounts to some money, yes, but it wasn't no great money that you could say uh, was going to tilt their life one way or another because it, it only happened about every 
three or four months, maybe two or three times a year, they could do this because the inventory that they usually check in places like this was just what they physically set up according to the manifest on how many they had to order. But these are the type of people that lived in the world back then. These are the type of people that frequent in 125th Street. Everybody had a hustle. Everybody had a hustle. Me, I had a hustle. My hustle was going to work for Ori every day and making and fixing clothes for people. That was my hustle. Now, all my life I've lived an honest, legitimate hustle. But I looked and I saw people all around me with some kind of hustle. And I say to myself, wow. And this went on over and over. These are the type of people that were around in Harlem in those days. Now, am I saying it didn't happen in other areas? I bet you it did because all, especially New York, because it was so thriving, somebody always had a hustle of getting over. So, once again, the brother gives you one of these stories about people, just people. If you saw them, Eye to eye, they just be regular people. So I'll be back with some more stories for you. Once again, the brother from Hall.